So if you have a problem like this, the first important thing that we need to do is set it equal to 0. So I need to get the 2 on the same side. So I have 6x squared minus 7x plus 2 equals 0. All right. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to determine if this is factorable. So to be able to do that, we can use our a times c method, which is a times c, which would be 6 times 2, which is equal to 12, and then b, which is negative 7. So once you multiply your first and your last term, you get 12, positive 12. And then they have to add to give you your middle term, which is b, which is negative 7. So now we list out all the factors of 12. And again, guys, if you get stuck with this, start with 12 and 1. Then go to the next number, 2. Does 2 divide into 12? Yes, yeah, 6 times. Then go to 3. Does 3 divide into 12? Yes, 4 times. And you just keep on going all the way. Just to start with 1. Does 1 divide? Yes. Does 2? Does 2 divide? Does 3? Does 4? Does 5? Just keep on going up and up and up. Um, now, we notice, though, that these factors, they have to multiply to give us 12, but they have to add to give us negative 7. So therefore, these all have to be negative. Now, what is the only pair of factors that add to give us a negative, uh, I'm sorry, give us a negative 7? Negative 4 and negative 3. So therefore, I can rewrite my equation as 6x squared minus 4x minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. All right, does everybody see that? Now, as we talked about what I went over in class, there was kind of two different methods that I went with this. But since I last did the box method, rather than, if you guys remember in the last example, I showed you how to multiply, right? Well, now what I'm going to have you do is try to find, here is what the product, now I want you to find the side lengths. So you have 6x squared minus 4x minus 3x and then plus 2. So basically what you do is you take your problem, fill up the box, and now figure out what do you multiply to give you 6x squared. What can give you 6x squared? 3 and 2, 3x and 2x, right? Or see, the problem is, though, if you did like 6x and x, that works, right? But then 6x times what gives you negative 4? And eh, that's like some fraction, right? So that's not going to work. So 6x and x maybe might not work. So maybe let's do 3x and 2x. Well, yeah, 3x times 2x gives you 6x squared. But 3x times what gives you negative 4x? Again, we run into a problem. However, what I notice, because I've done so many examples of these, I can switch this around into 2x and 3x. You can just re you switch them around. Because now, 2x times 3x gives you 6x squared. 2x times what gives you negative 4x? Because remember, 2x is the height. So 2x times what gives you negative 4x? Negative 2. And then 3x um, times what gives you negative 3x? Negative 1. And then you guys can check your answer. Negative 1 times negative 2, does that give you 2? Yes. So now we can state that 3x minus 2 times 2x minus 1. So this times this gives you that. Right? This times this gives you that. Well, that is set equal to 0. Now, the whole reason of why we factor is so we can use the zero product property, and we can set them both equal to 0. Then, now we just have to finish solving. And your final answer will be x equals 2 thirds, x equals 1 half. <sighs> Questions? Anybody? I didn't show the end solving game, but.